please. Hey, welcome to the show, bosses. Hey, ladies. Hi. How are you today? It was very, like, MC of you. I felt well, Welcome to I, the show. I felt it. I, <laughs> I felt love it. it. I kind of was, like, experimenting a little bit. And Melinda, thank you. I'm glad you noticed. You're welcome. It was a um, very TRL VJ. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, maybe I should, like, change career paths. Maybe a Meg DJ is in my future. I love it. I love it. Uh, so, ladies, how are we a boss this week? Jill, you want to go? Uh, sure. First? So I work with uh, an amazing mentorship program called Skillify, where there are pretty much kids either in high school or early years of college, and it's an amazing organization. I spoke to a large group of students at USC a couple of months ago, and I'm still in touch with the leader. And this kid reached out to me this week, and he is a junior in high school, and he's on the mayor's youth council, LA Mayor Eric Garcetti. And he reached out to me because he wanted my advice on an event that he's throwing, and I was able to put him in touch with some PR firms that I had worked with so he can get a celebrity guest for of the event. Of course Very you were. Cool. And I thought that was really awesome. Yeah. And I, I I think he thought I was really awesome. So that just <laughs> made it even better. You are the most like in touch person I've ever met. You know everybody, you are the best. And I that does not surprise me at all, but that's an amazing boss. So moment. that felt good because that that boss thing, that wasn't for me as much as it was for the organization and that's for the great. kids. So I really was totally thrilled with the outcome of that. So I'll have to look out for who he actually gets. Good for you. That'd be amazing. Awesome girl. What about you, Melinda? So as an independent artist, um, people somehow think that you can pay your bills with exposure. Mm. Um, (laughs) You you guys know what I'm talking about. Oh, that's the reality. pay for exposure. It's like, I don't need exposure. I need to pay my bills. So I actually haven't done exposure gigs in a really long time, but I was recently asked to do quite a few and I said no. Um, good. because good for you. as a boss, one, I have to make money, but two, I know my worth at this point uh-huh. as a performer. And I think that unfortunately everybody wants music at their event or, you know, whatever they're doing, but they never want to pay for it. It's like all the work that I've put into making this my career, you don't get it for free, you no. know? Oh. So I, I'm glad I'm at that point where I can say no to things and I don't need to just be out there performing. But yeah, I just right. say no to quite a few things. We've definitely all been there where you have to pay your dues, but mm-hmm. of course you're well past that. Right. And it's really important to know your worth. So awesome. Yeah. Way to boss up. Yeah, yeah. For Mag- me, I've seen a pattern with a lot of guests that we have on the show where they always say it's so important to take time for yourself. And yeah. I've realized lately I haven't been. So this week, uh, I have this favorite park that I go to, and I like to just go up there and, like, express gratitude and meditate and just take some Megan time. And that was my boss moment, guys, like, actually taking a moment for myself and, like, clearing my head. And I got to say, it really helps. It really does help. It helps with the creativity flow. Good for you. Yeah. Thanks. It's very important. I love that, Meg. Thanks. I'm glad that you went up there because you haven't been up there in a long time. I haven't been up there in a long time. It's it Also, too, it's been really hot, and now that it's, like, kind of – turning into fallish or it is fall that um yeah no it's really good uh but let's get into some real talk so I want to talk about who in your life has been your champion wow I I have so many but like I I have to say this and I I hope that she listens if she can figure out how to work a podcast but my (laughs) grandma is like my biggest fan And anybody that knows her falls in love with her. She has, like, such a magnetic personality. I feel like, in part, I get my wit from her and the way that I am from her. But she is supportive of whatever I do. She's in her mid-80s. She has Parkinson's. She can, like, barely talk. And we try to talk as much on the phone (laughs) as we can. Um, But she is, like, so wonderful. And she looks at me as if I am famous already. Oh. I love that. And it just makes my heart so warm. And she always asks me about how I'm doing, how my job is, you know, where can I watch you? She constantly wants to watch me on TV or, you know, YouTube because that's where I'm at, (laughs) (laughs) which is fine. But yeah, she's so wonderful. And she really has been a champion my entire life. And um, you guys haven't listened, but she has the most amazing voice like talking voice she, and i wonder she, where you get it from she no no not <laughs> oh no not that not like you think <laughs> no she is this like little jewish hungarian woman oh my god from the bronx 
and you know she talks like this and she's like oh my god Jillian you're so gorgeous you're beautiful oh my god how shameless how's your boyfriend I'm like oh, my oh grandma and everyone calls her darling I'm already obsessed with um, she's so, yeah, amazing she's wonderful and she honestly has been my champion since day one and I'm also the first grandchild so Aww. I'm obviously the favorite I <laughs> definitely think she now is an honorary uh, member of this podcast and of the a girl boss, boss squad uh, yeah. Yeah. She's hell yeah she's a girl boss she was a cross guard for like 25 years that's Heck yeah, wonderful keeping boss. people safe i love I it love i love it that's amazing it. well that, that was a really touching story thanks Aww. for sharing that girl <laughs> what about you melinda um i mean i have the obvious ones my parents my sister my husband they're all my champions and they uh you know encourage me to never give up but i think my biggest champion is myself because Ooh, i chills. wouldn't I have that. continued down this path even though I have constant failures and rejections, if I didn't believe in myself, and if I didn't believe that I had the capability to be in a bit on a bigger platform and to have a bigger career, so even though it sucks sometimes and it's really frustrating, I think it's very obvious and apparent and apparent that I am my biggest champion because I keep going and yeah. I don't give up. I honestly, I wasn't like expecting that answer. I don't know why. Like, I, <laughs> not that I knew what you were gonna say, but I was like really taken aback by that. That's Aww. really, really beautiful. Thank you. Uh, same goes for me. I obviously my parents are like my biggest fans, mm-hmm. but uh, just you know to give a little like one up to someone. I had a teacher, uh, Miss Nugent, in high school, and the class I was in was creative writing and. It was this class was so great because we were all like the breakfast club. We were just like this motley <laughs> crew of like a different groups of kids in all different grades. And I remember this was a time I was applying for colleges and my grades were good in school, but my SAT scores were horrible. And so I had a lot of different other teachers telling me like, Meg, you're aiming way too high. You're not going to get into this D1 school. You're not going to get into the school, blah, blah, blah. Um, but Miss Nugent was like, don't listen. You're, you're smart. You've got this. Awesome. And she literally had my back and carried me through senior year. And uh, I literally owe senior year to her because I, I, yeah, I was like bullied a lot too. And it, it was a, it was a hard year and like, thank God for her in that class. And it just, I forever will be indebted to her. She's fantastic, fantastic woman. Man, I love strong women. Yes. yes. We actually have a strong woman on the show today. Very, very excited. She is a boss lawyer that is the co-owner of a firm and we will be back with miss cheryl right after this see you later in a minute welcome back boss babes so right now we are joined by cheryl johnson hartwell she's an attorney and has been for over 20 years she owns her own law firm. Yes, she does. And her specialty is working with employers to ensure compliance with the law and defending them when employees file a claim against them. She is a wife, a mother, a friend, and a lawyer. Yes, in that order. So welcome, Cheryl. (laughs) Thank you. Happy to be here. Yeah. So, oh, oh, go ahead. (laughs) Right? No, I'm just eager. I want to jump in. Go ahead. So you initially got your degree in psychology. Um, What made you want to go into law from there, the pivot? Well, I didn't know what I was going to do with a psychology degree. Um, I didn't, at that time, want to be a psychologist. And I had an old boyfriend who was in law school and said, I thought, I think you'd make a great lawyer. So I took the LSAT. I worked for a year in a law firm, and then I went to law school. And, and she me. makes it seem easy. <laughs> so <laughs> easy. Yeah, I went to law school. <laughs> no, no big deal. <laughs> Quick side note question. So the was an ex boyfriend that had made this suggestion, or was he your boyfriend at the time? He was an ex, someone that I had. But dated. that's yeah. so amazing. Yeah. Like, he was that, like, you'd be a good lawyer. Yeah, that's yeah. really cool. He just said, "I always thought you'd be a good lawyer." Never had occurred to me. So I decided to do a little research by mm-hmm. working in a law firm. And while I was working there, I took the LSAT and applied to law school. You good did just you. make it sound really easy. Yeah. <laughs> but, but talk about like the struggle or the hustle of that transition, or were there ever moments where you were just like maybe I should have stuck with psychology. Like, what am I doing? Actually, absolutely. Over the last 20 years, I have often thought that I maybe should have gone the other path. Mm. Um, but I've I, the first five or six years of practice, I really hated what I was doing. And then once I started enjoying it, I, it, I would say it's not my passion. Um, I don't know exactly what my passion is, but, um, but I really love what I do. I, I enjoy it. I'm happy. I'm satisfied. So, um, 
but I, yeah, it was, it was a weird switch to all of a sudden go into something because a lot of people going to the law know that they want to do it for a long time. They're political science majors and they, they plan for it. And I had no plan whatsoever and just decided that this is what I was going to try and it worked. That's well, so I know amazing. Aristotle once said, the law is free from passion. And the only reason why I know that is because of Reese Witherspoon is legally blonde. <laughs> <laughs> but you are legally blonde. Yes, I love it. I am blonde. I love you it. Are Throughout blonde. that 20-year career, did you ever think you would own your own law firm? Uh, no, I didn't. And let me clarify, I own it along with about 19 or 20 other people. Right, right. So I'm a co-owner. Mm-hmm. But um, I... I didn't really see that as my path. I just mm-hmm. wanted to be the worker bee that was doing the work and going home at night. And when I got to the firm I'm at now, um, they just really fostered me and encouraged me. It's a very woman-friendly environment. That's great. Um, and they saw something in me that I probably didn't see in myself. And one day I, I said, hey, I actually want this. And within a very short period of time, it happened. The managing partner actually approached me and said he wanted to sponsor me. And the next thing I knew, I was I was a part owner of a law firm. So wow. earlier in the show, we talked about somebody in your career that has championed for you. So would you say it's that partner or is there like another moment that sticks out in your mind? Um, there have been a couple of people actually, and they've they've both been men. Um, so it was the first one was a, a mentor who really knew an area of the law that I was getting into. And he would just give me little bits of advice, both on a personal level, like don't put your, um, put your life on hold for your career. Mm-hmm. Cause I was trying to wait to have a child and start a family. Cause I wanted to wait till I made partner. He said, no, you need, you need to live your life and the career wow. will follow. Um, and, uh, we had a, a situation where the firm that we were at was closing the office we were in and he um, he found a new home for a group of us and included me in that. Um, even though at the time I was, you know, I was making a good salary, but I didn't have clients of my own. Mm-hmm. So a lot of firms wouldn't have been interested in me. And it was 2009, which was a really bad time for yeah. the economy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So he took me along and trained me. Um, and then when he left our current firm, he basically left his biggest client. And now that's that's my client Um, so he was one person and then the managing partner of the firm uh, has really been um, a big champion for me and and making he checks in with me periodically make sure I'm doing okay that I'm satisfied I'm happy that I'm getting what I need the support I need etc so yeah I've been really lucky in that has it always been that way you said that this firm that you're at now is very like female oriented but other firms that you've been at, have you found that it hasn't been quite that way? I mean, unfortunately, I don't want to hear that it, that's the case, but <laughs> was that the case? Um, not for me. And Good. and I don't in any way believe that that's a normal um, situation in, in my field. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. My field is, is really bad on the numbers for women. Uh, women are entering the field, but then they don't advance, um, probably because of family dynamics. You know, they're unable to... Uh, they, they leave the workforce for a period of time and then they're unable to recover from that. Um, firms are still not set up to uh, support women in having families and having the lifestyle that they want. I haven't had that experience. I've been at three really great firms. Um, I haven't, with aside from the occasional walking into a deposition and having people assume that I'm not the lawyer, that I must be the court reporter or mm-hmm. something like that, um, I haven't really had that much um, of of a problem with, you know, with gender. Um, but this firm of the three I've been at has been the most female friendly. That's great to hear. Mm -hmm. So starting a family and getting married and all of those things that you wanted to put on hold, are you happy that you decided not to do that and to go along and Uh, right? Well, I didn't, I didn't put the marriage part on hold. Um, but the, the kids, I, I'm not really, I hadn't really planned on having children and then my husband wanted to have children. So we eventually, you know, did. And I'm very glad that I, that I They're did. They're the obviously. cutest little girls. Like, <laughs> oh my gosh. I, I'm in, I'm obsessed with my children. And you, <laughs> you heard the way that, that, that I order my life, mm-hmm. wife, mother, mm-hmm. you know, the lawyers down on the list, mm-hmm. even though it's an important part of who I am. But um, I'm glad that I did things the way that I did because um, career is very important to me. And, and when I did have children, it was really easy for me to plug back in afterwards. Um, and I think I'm a better mother as an older mother than I would have been when I was younger. I didn't know myself well enough. What do you teach your daughters about what they want to be when they grow up? Well, I certainly teach them they can be anything they want to be. Mm-hmm. Um, and. They don't talk that much about it yet. They're only five and nine, but um, 
I, I, I really want, I, I don't want to limit them in any way. I don't want them to think they have to have the path that I did. Um, even if the path they choose is, you know, not as stable or financially um, lucrative as, as the path I chose, I want them to find their passion because you spend so much time at your job in your career mm -hmm. that if you don't like what you're doing, it's going to color the rest of your, your existence and mm -hmm. your world. And that's, that's just not a way to live. Yeah. Well, that's, that's really amazing. What was that moment where you were like, I'm a girl boss. <laughs> like that one moment where you're like, you know what? I think I'm a girl boss right now. I think it's that, um, well, people call me boss. Um, that they'll they'll say, "Okay, boss." Doesn't get much more boss. Yeah, than that. right. It's amazing. It's there a definition was a, of yeah. There was a time when somebody called me boss where I wasn't um, I wasn't the boss like I am now. I was just a supervisor, and um, and it kind of threw me off. And I thought, I'm not I'm not a boss. I'm just someone who has a couple more years of experience than you are. But I I was I was supervising a, a secretary and a paralegal and a couple of attorneys, and now I supervise a lot of people and or the boss of a lot of people. <laughs> um, it, it, and I think that's part of when my um, job satisfaction increased because then I was the one that was making the assignments. I was the one that was deciding, hey, I really don't want to do this project. I'm going to give it to someone else to do. Um, and I had a lot more autonomy and control over my schedule and the work that I was doing. And that made a big mental shift for me. Not only are you a boss, in the firm but uh, according to Melinda you're really good at singing she as well. has an incredibly beautiful <laughs> that's voice that's amazing so and you two met at church, we met at church. is that yeah. how you discovered your singing voice um I how she discovered my or singing yeah, voice? I, guess, yeah. I guess it's <laughs> just sang, a general question well she yeah. sang in the choir but I think I heard you sing solo I think it was on Christmas time maybe Correct. oh okay and I was like what <laughs> <laughs> Just, you're classically trained. I'm classically yeah. trained. And I don't sing anywhere near as well as Melinda does, <laughs> but um, I, I was going to be an opera singer. That was my very first career choice mm -hmm. before psychology and um, just decided I didn't have the passion for it and didn't want to do it every day. But I, I do enjoy it, so I still I still sing here and there. Yeah. Especially opera. That's a talent. Is, Not everyone can do that. And she's that's, great at that's it. That's really cool. What else other than singing do you like to do as a hobby when you're not being a boss um, I like a lot of the um, the home things. I like cooking and mm. sewing, crafting. Um, certainly love spending time with my family. Mm. Um, I love movies, exercise. Great. Great. So you do enjoy your downtime because I feel like a lot of bosses they don't get ha much. have a hard time doing that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it wasn't easy when my children were younger to find that time, but I, I don't believe I can be the best person in any of the roles I play unless I'm focusing on self-care. That's I'm, a pattern we've yeah. seen with yes. a lot of the girl yes. boss guests that we've had in. Self-care is like so important. So important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Totally. Uh, well, you're amazing. doing amazing. Yes. And this was enlightening, I would say. Thank you so much for coming on the yeah. show. And all right, guys, yeah. we'll see you next week. Bye. Take care. Bye. 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 Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Boss Please Pod. And don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe on iTunes. Navigate the path to your best self with us because bossing together is always better. Yeah, yeah, yeah.